Closers on News Talk 1400 KFRU and Sports Radio 104.1. The Fan. And welcome back to the closers here on News Talk 1400 KFRU Sports Radio 1041. The Fan. We could probably all use a little bit of help with this. Our reputation. And uh, especially as it entwines with social media. And uh, welcome back to the closers here. It's News Talk 1400 KFRU Sports Radio 1041. The Fan. I'm George Young. And happy to be joined by Ken Wisniewski. He is a reputation management and social media expert. He also is a founder and CEO of a business, uh, an internet marketer called Webimax. And uh, Ken, first off, thank you very much for taking some time. I know it's been a very busy part of your schedule, uh, especially since social media and athlete reputation seems to be uh, on collision courses many, many times, It's a, and it becomes a fiery wreck. No, absolutely, George, and I appreciate the time to uh, to talk about it. Obviously, it's something that uh, keeps coming up more and more, and especially uh, we hear more and more about it every day. Well, it, and and let's go with uh, let's let's start global, and we'll kind of work our way in a little bit. Uh, you've got some of the old the old guard, whether it is Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. He's not really the old guard, but he's been around for a while with this with social media. Peyton Manning, uh, some of the guys in Major League Baseball. Whether you know you you look at. Uh, Clayton Kershaw, just throwing some names out there on the football side, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, um, Alex Smith. They've all, they've grown up with or through this evolution. They have not grown up with it. What's the difference between what you're seeing with the, the newer athlete coming in as opposed to the older guys who are, you know, 25, 28, 30 plus years old? Sure. I think one of the biggest things is that uh, some of those athletes you kind of referenced in the beginning, you know, the Peyton Mannings, the Tom Brady's, you know, when their careers were kind of taking off, social media wasn't as predominant, and they were kind of used to probably aspects of almost the privacy that they had before where it was just really what the reporters were providing that was kind of their uh, way of being able to kind of communicate their message. When you look at kind of the the newer crop of people kind of coming into sports, uh, they've been a lot more exposed to social media. They're used to it. They utilize it a lot more, and uh, they seem to have a lot more comfortability with it, where the others are kind of brought up in, in maybe what we consider to be that old regime of having a bit more privacy and keeping some things more uh, under guard as opposed to being so out in the open. Well, and they are very out and open, and it even gets uh, some of the old guard in trouble. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, Jerry Jones hit the, the news about everybody taking pictures uh, of him uh, in some particular compromising situations that he was, that weren't very flattering, so it even affects them. Give me, what what's the one piece of advice that you have for whether it's the older group that's just getting into Twitter or they've been on it for a little while, I've been on it for not a whole long time, but I'm on it, very careful about what I do. What what do you tell a lot of people who are just getting into this? I think the biggest thing that really impacts celebrities or athletes or anyone who has any type of prominence uh, just in general is that any type of picture, uh, any type of messaging that you put forth uh, is going to be scrutinized. And you can't expect that it's just going to be your small group of friends that see it. Uh, when you're a public figure, uh, you know, how many times have things been posted and taken down within minutes, but they're, they're already, you know, spreading like wildfire through, you know, through the reaches of social media is just the fact that when you're in those positions, your thoughts and comments and pictures are going to be scrutinized and really are going to be uh, traveling very quickly. So you, you need to think very long and hard before you go in and kind of post an opinion about something that's really a hot topic that, you know, you might not be super educated on or, you know, posting a picture at 3 a.m. when you're coming back from the clubs might not be a great idea either. Yeah, Herm Edwards is famous for saying, don't press send. Uh, so, yeah, that, yeah, That's exactly right, and I think that that's uh, something that is, uh, you know, very apropos nowadays where I think that, you know, a lot of times what happens, you know, is regretful. How many, uh, how many retractions or apologies have we seen that have ultimately been prompted by something dumb that's been, you know, kind of transferred via social media. Yeah, well, and that ends up where you start coming in here. We're talking with visiting with uh, Ken <laughs> Wisniewski here is a uh, social media reputation management expert here on The Closest. I'm George Young. Uh, he's also the founder and CEO of Webamax, which, uh, I mean, that's, that's a great little site if you want to uh, dally around and find out what they can do to help you out. But, Ken, 
at that point, that's where you kind of step in and help people manage their reputations. And let's let's go with the guy who has uh, all of a sudden come first and foremost into the headlight because he doesn't seem to get it right now. And that's the impression from a lot of people. And that's Jonathan Manziel uh, right now, the number two quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and it's interesting because if you kind of look at uh, Manziel, you know, coming off the the Heisman win, you know, there was, you know, kind of, uh, you know, he had kind of started up while he was still in college, you know, kind of posting some pictures that got him in hot water, got him suspended right for the first half of the opening game last year. But then someone spoke to him, and, you know, he just disappeared from social media for a large part of last year until he was actually done with his college career and started to actually, uh, you know, get involved with turning professional and at that point you know there's just been the influx of things so he had almost kind of been given the advice of kind of stay clear of it you know stay off social media don't really you know post pictures don't do anything ridiculous and you know it worked for you know his entire year last year and now it's just kind of you know restarted and you know he he seems to kind of be uh you know the poster boy for you know kind of uh leveraging social media to almost you know, beat down your brand as opposed to uh, help influence it. Yeah, uh, he's kind of, it seems like he's right now giving the impression that he's making up for lost time uh, with that one year he was more or less off social media. Uh, Ken Wisniewski here on the closes with us talking social media and your reputation and what can be done about it. Uh, a lot of what we've seen is, is guys grow through this process. Colin Kaepernick is one. Uh, you know, you look at what Russell Wilson has done. Cam Newton stubbed his toe, figured it out, and he's been pretty quiet the last couple of years. But I think the one real big thing that sticks with people about Johnny Manziel right now is, especially if you're a business owner, he's been talked to by his head coach, Mike Pettin, about dialing it back. He's been talked to by his owner, uh, Jimmy Haslam, dial it back. And he's basically given both of those gentlemen the – the equivalent, and we'll get to this in a minute as well, the verbal middle finger when he says something like this. No, it's true. And, again, I think, uh, you know, all these scenarios, you know, first of all, have kind of played into why he's probably uh, ultimately going to be uh, very much uh, sought after by, you know, the opponents and, you know, everybody's going to kind of be chirping at him when he's out on the field. And, uh, you know, obviously at the same time, you know, all of those things probably play into the Browns, you know, feeling from a maturity level, he's not ready for, you know, being handed, you know, the opportunity to be the starting quarterback. And, you know, clearly, you know, Cleveland's looking for something to jumpstart and, you know, basically be, uh, you know, a reason for people to pay attention to him. And he would seem to be that guy, but he's, he's almost basically put himself in a position that it's backfired a little bit for him. Yeah, and, when, and he found out he was the number two quarterback, and uh, he had this to say about that. I wouldn't go back. Um from the point after the draft to now and change a single thing. I'm going to continue to live my life and 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 the off season is the off season. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to travel places, I'm going to go places, I'm going to do things and and that's going to have no effect. Obviously, I need to do it um, in the proper way, but I'm still going to continue to have fun in my life and continue to live my life. Okay, you're if you're a business owner, Ken, this is the guy that you basically have brought into the office three times now for a visit with the principal and you know, on, on that standpoint, you have to you kick him to the curb because you're like, dude, you're not getting it. How do you how do you get somebody like this, Ken, to to get it with social media and how their reputation is just being trashed? You know, I think the the problem right now is that he hasn't really kind of seen any total negative from it. You know, the fact that you know he he kind of. You know, I don't know if he was ever really going to win the starting job. That was kind of already conjectured. It was, you know, kind of thought that Hoyer would start out. But I think what it's really going to take for Manziel to really understand the implications of this is that he's losing opportunity, you know, where he's actually not going to be given opportunity because of the fact of the things he's doing. Sooner or later, that's going to, you know, his brand starts to go away here pretty soon if he rides the bench all year and, you know, next year, you know, he's riding the bench again. You know, being the second quarterback on the Browns isn't exactly a glamorous position. And uh, ultimately, you know, he's going to find that, you know, he starts to be an afterthought. So I think some of those things kind of weigh into him. And also on the same respect, when you look at it, you've got, you know, uh, the potential people say, oh, well, you know, he's going to be the next Joe Namath. Well, he needs to play to be the next Joe Namath. But also, you know, at the same time, I could easily see him being the next Brian Bosworth. 
Ouch! Just less muscular and a lot tinier because uh, he, do, he does tinier look... <laughs> and yeah, and, and and maybe better hair. Yeah. Okay. Well, y'all, yeah, I will give I will give Manzel the better hair part. All right. Uh, Ken Wisniewski, we're here with us on the closer social media and reputation management expert. As we wrap this up, uh, we've got the University of Missouri right here in town. Uh, we cover a lot of their stuff. If you had, if you sat down with the players, let's just go with the football season because that starts here a week from today. If you sat down with the football team. Give me your – what is your top three pieces of advice for a social media for the collegiate athlete? Um, first and foremost, I would probably tell them to, to really probably avoid it at this point. Uh, I don't think that too often, uh, you know, more harm than good comes from it. Uh, I think that, you know, in my experience, I think I would really kind of tell them to, to kind of avoid it or if, you know, they were going to utilize it. You know, unfortunately, the advice I would give them would really be to to kind of have watered down, you know, scenarios. Don't don't make very pointed opinions. Don't you know rant about lack of playing time. Don't do any of those things because it's ultimately going to come back on you and uh, turn out to be something that doesn't you know prove well. Uh, additionally, you know, I think one of the big areas too is you know avoid you know talking about you know any of your opponents or anything along those lines because again, all of that gets pushed back and you know this can fuel fire for people to, you know, basically kicking, you know, the sleeping lion, you know, no reason to kind of incite other teams before coming in it. But uh, again, I think with college athletes, you know, it's something that all the other students are using. Uh, but again, it's it's really just something that, you know, smaller groups of people are seeing when you're on the sports teams and you're playing on a national audience, you know, everything you're going to say is going to be viewed differently, scrutinized, and ultimately, um, you know, let's be honest, very, very few scenarios we can point to, we could say, wow, there's been positive impact uh, because of the, uh, you know, the things that have gone on on social media for this collegiate athlete. Most of the time, it's, it's always very negative. Yeah, there's very few occasions where you can look back on something and just chuckle about it uh, and say, oh, boy, that was fun, wasn't it? All right, Ken. <laughs> uh, we did have that one, though, where uh, it was uh, Sheldon Richardson with old man football. That uh, got him into a little bit of trouble. But, we, you know, you look back on that now and you just chuckle at it because that was what Sheldon was like. Ken Wisniewski with us here. Uh, he also the founder and CEO of Web and Max, but he's a social and media reputation management expert. Ken, I really do appreciate your time here today here on The Closers visiting with us. And, thank again, thank you very much. Thanks, George. I really appreciate the time. You are very, very welcome, sir. And uh, we'll be back with more of The Closers, and we'll try to rehab our reputation as we work our way through these next couple of hours here on The Closers. We'll be right back. News Talk 1400 KFRU and Sports Radio 1041, The Fan. The Closers on News Talk 1400 KFRU and Sports Radio 104.1, The Fan.